I made it. <laughs> so, uh, in the previous video, I showed you how the quest system that I created works, right? So, anything can become a quest, and basically, I just have to trigger a quest and stuff like this. So, if you don't, if you didn't watch it, go watch it. But I just created the first. Well, the first onboarding mission of the game is just to onboard the players so we can uh, communicate to them how they are supposed to play the game. And I want to show it because I created the first part of the mission and I want to show how I will create the second part. So in this, in this system, I'm using a recipe, which is basically just a design pattern that I created that I use for personal, that I created for personal use. So it's called Event Player. The event player leverages Godot animation system to basically create events that I can um, play one after the other and I can basically uh, seek for a specific, uh, a specific event. So I'm about to show you how this works. But the interesting part is that this event player is fundamentally... Well, the Godot animation system is basically uh, a visual programming language. The only thing that mi is missing is the ability to grab data in real time or stuff like this well we can do that using the capture mode for animation tracks but we don't have like access to instances and stuff like this but if we wrap this this procedures of grabbing a an instance in real time and assembling some stuff and do some procedures on it in a method which is what i'm doing this basically becomes your only the only thing that you need to create games in Godot Engine. So let me show you how this works. So that I have the, the event player is this class right here. And basically it is a bunch of animations that I need to index because what's the idea that let me show you the, the script. So basically it's well, it's essentially an index way to play animations. So basically what I do here is to play the next event. It will increase the, the current event and play the, the event. The event will basically be an animation that is indexed right here. So I look for an animation in this animation list. And based on that, I will look for the, the index and play the, the, in the e index. <laughs> so I will play the animation based on its index on this list. And I made two two methods that will help me find animations in this list, right? So I have to pass a, an event library. This is something very interesting about this model. As I, I'm about to show you, we can create animation libraries to, well, manage better all, all these events. And due to that, I probably can make something like, I can basically close this and say, well, I just want to play these animations right here, but in the future I can create more animations that are like chapter two, chapter five, chapter, 11 and keep adding these uh, animations through the to the event player and that these methods in one i can pass an index for an animation and the other one i can look for a specific animation so a specific animation name inside this event library so that's basically it and the idea is that through these events so let me open so for instance on the introduction i will basically uh, tell so as I said, there are some things that you need to wrap inside methods to be able to do what you intend, right? So for instance, on that part right here, I have to access the the label and update the label text based on a resource that I created that is the, the, the data of a dialogue. And after that I play the I I make the interface appear the dialogue interface and also the manager portrait appear as well. So this is the introduction part. After that, I create another animation which basically updates the dialogue data. So this is a dialogue data, a dialogue text that will be displayed through this animation. And after that, every interaction with the dialogue will play the next animation. So let me show you interface dialogue text, probably this one. Yeah, next prompt. You can see that this is connected to the next, to play the next event. So this is how I I am choreographing the events of the game. Let me show you how this works in the game. But well, let me show you at at least the the final thing because uh, this one. So after that, after introducing the dialogue to the player and giving them context about the the quest, everything that I need to do is to make the dialogue the dialogue interface disappear and 
to tell the the quest to add it to the player's quest, right? So this is how I wrapped all this logic inside these methods and I'm using them to play the these events. Let me show you how does that work. Because with everything set up, with these methods set up, everything you need to do is basically to, <laughs> to use animation to animations to tell when they happen and what's the sequence in which they should happen. So let me show you how that works. And as you can see, uh, these SRs right here are not going to be used for for the quest. So just these ones because, as I said, the quest is an object that I can attach to specific objects. Uh, anything can be a quest. So this is an ability, a component, a module that I can attach to any object. So I basically created two types of asteroids. One that uh, doesn't have the quest uh, object, the quest progress, and these right here have the the quest progress. So if I talk to the manager, guys, everything here is a triggered by animations. This is the the interesting part. So, I, well, animations and signals, right? So these are uh, very powerful systems that Google provides to us. So this is the dialogue. After this ends, it will trigger the quest. And you can see that these ones right here are not uh, part of the quest, right? Because the manager specifically said, uh, I want you to take rid of the asteroids surrounding the, the company. So uh, these are the, the ones. And since the manager said that I can basically just take, take care of five of them because the janitor We'll take care of the rest. I will just take rid of these. This also triggers the, the quest because the, the completion of the quest is also linked to an event. So it will tell the event player to, to play a specific event. So yeah, this looks good, this looks good, etc. And after that, I'm free to... to to do other stuff. But let me show you how does, how can I make another quest. So, as I said, everything can be a quest and I, I will show you how am I going to design the new quest. So the first thing that I'm going to do, well, I showed players that they can destroy asteroids, right? So the next thing that I want to show them is that they will be, um, some sometimes they will be raided by space pirates. And how am I going to do that? So I'm going to create an interaction, interaction error 2D, interactive error 2D actually, instantiate, and this error 2D has, well, three basic signals. So interacted, interaction available, interaction unavailable. And what I'm about to do is to make it trigger when the player leaves uh, the surroundings of the, the company, it will trigger another event. So this is the design of this quest. And the manager will tell the player, hey, oh, you got raided by some space pirates, take care of them before they, they leave. So I think that I will make this a little bigger. Yeah, when player leaves like this range. It will start disabled because I don't want the player to trigger that uh, before the, the, the quest start, before the player finished the, the previous quest. So I'm going to save that. And um, let's see. Yeah, so I'm going to connect the interaction unavailable, which is something that triggers when players leave the, this area. And I'm going to go here and tell this to find and update by index. And I have to, f to pass the, um, the animation library which will be enemy encounter first enemy encounter first enemy encounter and i can basically just pass the index which will be the zero index because i want the the, the event play to play from the beginning so this will be the the animation library and it will be played from the beginning now i can basically uh, do stuff through the event right so after the player finished this quest right here, 
So I'm going to enable it. Enabled after the player finished this event, so the finished asteroid event, which is the, the last part of the previous quest. And I'm going to create a new animation library. First enemy encounter. So this is what we will use. And let's change to let's create a new well I'm I will copy the introduction duplicate but I'm you I will use on the first enemy encounter and I'm also going to copy the the second one because this is kind of like a template right so duplicate but instead of introduction first enemy encounter and the final part already uh, as well so finish no I uh, actually yeah finished because this will make the the whole thing disappear right so duplicate introduction first enemy and everything that I need to do right now is basically to create content so I will go to the the first one I will make this dialogue unique so it doesn't override the the previous the the, the shared resource right so make unique and uh, well i say oh you got raided by some space pirates i will go to the next one make this unique as well take rid of them take rid of them before they disappear to get their bounty is that how how, how we write that sentence well if you are an english speaker please correct me but yeah this is what we need to do and at the end yeah because this one right here just basically clean up the the dialogue and make makes it disappear and i will well and uh this one i will take rid of that and i'm will i will kill free this interactive error 2d because i don't want it to trigger this event again right so I will call a method, attractive error to the, act, actually, I will do that on the first line right here. Let me trigger this event, Q3. Okay, save. Okay, so on, on, on this part, I will also call a method on the player's, well, the player scene has a space part spawner that will always trigger some, some stuff, will always spawn some enemies around it. And I can use this on this event player as well. So let me show how this works. So I will add another call method. Enemy radio spawner. And I will tell it to spawn. Well, spawn five. Five enemies. And well, I think that this is it. So when we play, we will need to destroy first the asteroids. Because this is the the quest that once finished will allow the player to to trigger the next quest. Oh, yeah. So probably, yeah. This is not disabled, right? So I need to play reset on save, reset, disabled, value true, and I will take rid of the asteroids before the quest actually starts. Oh, let me trigger the quest already. Hi. Okay, so this will probably trigger the the next quest. So if I leave the surroundings of this quest, yeah. So there we have it. Oh, you got raided by some space pirates. Take rid of them before they disappear to get a bounty. Okay. And there we have it. But this is what I wanted to show you. This is uh, how good old engine provides us with a visual programming tool that well. Yeah, you have to make some actual coding, some uh, textual programming before you can actually take advantage, before you can leverage your code. But after you have everything laid out and all the systems integrated, you can basically just use animations to do everything else in Grunt Engine. So this is very powerful. If you want to know more about that, if you want to understand how these systems work and how you can integrate this this system in your game i will put a link in the description for my book it's on Godot 3. Point, it's on version 3 but everything there will work on Godot 4 as well so I, I didn't have any complaints about this book on the very opposite uh it has over than 30 reviews and it keeps with five 
a stars rating. So highly recommend that. And if you want to actually make your game, so I have this mentorship program of six months long mentorship, so you can design, develop and launch your first game, so you can start to earn your first dollars with your passion. I'll put the link in the description as well. But for this video, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.